Here we have been given this ellipse and an external point PE in its plane from which we want to draw a tangent to this ellipse. Now we have already seen something like that for a circle. So let us start from there. So suppose this was a circle given to us and the point P in its plane from which we have drawn this tangent which is tangential at T. And suppose this whole diagram is drawn on this sheet of paper which we will take into three dimensional space so that we can do operations like rotation on that paper and of course the diagram which is drawn on it. So this is how we are going to rotate it. Now I am going to color code it so we can distinguish between the two. So what you see in purple is the rotated diagram while green is the original. Now you can see that this green circle has transformed into this purple ellipse and this green tangent PT to it has now shifted position shown in purple. The question is, is this purple line tangential to this ellipse? Well, let's consider the points of intersection for that. To start with, this tangent must be meeting the circle in a single point because that's what tangents do. And just because we have rotated the diagram or now looking at it from a different point of view shouldn't change the number of points of intersection. So this line must be meeting this ellipse in a single point and by definition therefore it is a tangent. So we got the construction but there is a problem and the problem is we got this by rotating our diagram in a three dimensional space. How can we do that on a two dimensional paper? Well fortunately this rotation in three dimensions really amounts to something very simple in this two dimensional world. Just look at the green and the purple paper. It is simply a matter of taking the green paper and compressing it, scaling it down in the y direction. And you will see that for every point, every point in the green world just gets its y coordinate scaled down. For this point P, this is happening. For this point of tangency T, it is happening. For every point it will happen. And that's the trick. So let us get back to our original problem. We will take the x axis and y axis along the major and minor axis of the ellipse and we will draw this circle with major axis as the diameter. This is kind of the original unrotated or unscaled circle that we started with. So we have these two worlds, the unscaled and unrotated world of the circle and the scaled or rotated world of the ellipse and we can go back and forth between them just by scaling in the y direction. But how much is that scale? For that, let us take two representative points that we know. We know that this point C on the circle gets transformed to this point E on the ellipse. So to figure out the scale, we will take an arbitrary point S on the axis like this and draw these two blue lines through C and E then any vertical line that you draw starting from the top line going up to this axis will be intersected by these blue lines in the same ratio. So that's a trick we will use. So how to transform say this point PE in the ellipse world to a corresponding point say PC in the circle world? Well, take its Y coordinate and project it on this line then go on to the other line, top line and project it back over here. So this point PE will then get scaled up like this. So this is the corresponding point in the circle world. Once we get this point, the problem is essentially solved. So let's get rid of this clutter and then draw a tangent to the circle from this point PC. This is the point of tangency. Its corresponding point of tangency on the ellipse will be down here. So let's project and get it. So now we know the point of tangency on the circle. This is where the tangent ends and this is where it begins. So just connect them with a straight line which will be the desired tangent. 